Welcome everyone to today's workbook discussion on Zoom. Welcome also to all who join us later by watching or listening to this recording. I'm Laura Fenimore, the Chief Development Officer and Volunteer Coordinator with the Foundation for Inner Peace, the scribe authorized publisher of A Course in Miracles. We really appreciate your partnership with the Foundation. And if you wanna learn more about the Foundation or A Course in Miracles, please visit ACIM.org. If you feel inspired to make a love offering, please visit ACIM.org and at the top of the page, you will find the word donate. All donations support the work of the foundation. Each session will be delving into a discussion of the workbook lessons in A Course in Miracles led by a moderator team of volunteers that work with the foundation. What does discussion mean? In our gatherings here, we welcome the Holy Spirit to join us. Through this presence, our meeting becomes a joining of equals to commune with the Holy Spirit's guidance to experience miracles together. Some of the moderators here also support our social media channels. And if you'd like a list of FIP resources, please email support at ACIM.org and we'll be happy to share the resource list with you. Now let's begin our discussion. Welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to first read the guidelines that uh, we have established for our group. And then I'm going to read a prayer from one, a lesson uh, 163, and then we'll have our discussion. <clears throat> so welcome to A Course in Miracles study group on Zoom. The Foundation for Inner Peace, the scribe authorized publisher of A Course in Miracles, invites you to join our online study group hosted on Zoom. A dedicated team of volunteers facilitates these sessions to create a supportive learning environment. Guidelines. To foster a safe and positive space, we kindly ask all participants to Embrace kindness and respect. Remember to teach only love, for that is what you are. Focus on the course. Our discussions will center on studying and applying the principles outlined in A Course in Miracles. We kindly request that you refrain from questioning the validity of the course or its documented history as presented by the Foundation for Inner Peace. This includes avoiding conspiracy theories. Share openly and respectfully. We welcome your thoughts and perspectives. Disagreements may arise, but let's express them constructively and avoid invalidating others' experiences. Sarcasm, insults, and derogatory remarks have no place here. Let's prioritize open and respectful communication. Welcome the Holy Spirit. As we engage in discussions, we invite the Holy Spirit's guidance to transform our interactions into holy relationships. This allows us to see the Christ within each other, fostering a sense of unity and love. Together, let's embark on a journey of learning and spiritual growth through A Course in Miracles. So if you would all just get comfortable with however you like to be while you go into prayer, Settle back and take a deep breath and relax while I read. Our Father, bless our eyes today. We are your messengers, and we would look upon the glorious reflection of your love, which shines in everything. We live and move in you alone. We are not separate from your eternal life. There is no death, for death is not your will. And we abide where you have placed us in the life we share with you and with all living things to be like you and part of you forever. We accept your thoughts as ours and our will is one with yours eternally. Amen. So welcome everyone. It's so good to see you all here today. 
So, oh, we have 50, 17 people with us here. So that's great. And we're going to start off with <clears throat> where we left off last week. And that was uh, review number two. And I'm going to uh, read the introduction and then we'll start with lesson 81. We are now ready for another review. We will begin where our last review left off and cover two ideas each day. The earlier part of each day will be devoted to one of these ideas and the latter part of the day to the other. We will have one longer exercise period and frequent shorter ones in which we practice each of them. <clears throat> the longer practice periods will follow this general form. Take about 15 minutes for each of them and begin by thinking about the ideas for the day and the comments that are included in the assignments. Devote some three or four minutes to reading them over slowly, several times if you wish, and then close your eyes and listen. Repeat the first phase of the exercise period if you find your mind wandering, but try to spend the major part of the time listening quietly but attentively. There is a message waiting for you. Be confident that you will receive it. Remember that it belongs to you and that you want it. Do not allow your intent to waver in the face of distracting thoughts. Realize that whatever form such thoughts may take, they have no meaning and no power. Replace them with your determination to succeed. Do not forget that your will has power over all fantasies and dreams. Trust it to see you through and carry you beyond them all. Regard these practice periods as dedications to the way, the truth, and the life. Refuse to be sidetracked into detours, illusions, and thoughts of death. You are dedicated to salvation. Be determined each day not to leave your function unfulfilled. Reaffirm your determination in the shorter practice periods as well, using the original form of the idea for general applications and more specific forms when needed. Some specific forms are included in the comments, which follow the statement of the ideas. These, however, are merely suggestions. It is not the particular you, words you use that matter. And that brings us to lesson 81. And I'd like to ask for two volunteers to read one after the other, the paragraphs. Aha. Stephanie, and who else? Ah, Andrew, yay. Okay, Stephanie, would you start off with paragraph one? And then, Andrew, would you read paragraph two? 61. I am the light of the world. How holy am I who have been given the function of lighting up the world? Let me be still before my holiness. In its calm light, let all my conflicts disappear. In its peace, let me remember who I am. Some specific forms for applying this idea when special difficulties seem to arise might be, let me not obscure the light of the world in me. Let the light of the world shine through this appearance, this shadow will vanish before the light. Stephanie? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, 362. Forgiveness is my function as the light of the world. It is through accepting my function that I will see the light in me. And in this light, Will my function stand clear and perfectly unambiguous before my sight? My acceptance does not depend on my recognizing what my function is, for I do not yet understand forgiveness. Yet I will trust that in the light, I will see it as it is. Specific forms for using this idea might include let this help me learn what forgiveness means. Let me not separate my function from my will. I will not use this for an alien purpose. 
you. Thank you for reading. And Stephanie, <clears throat> your hand is up. Did you want to comment? Did either one of you want to comment on what you've read? I have a comment. Okay. Uh, these practices are, 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 I love doing these because it, you could do it waiting in an airport terminal or sitting in a park or sitting in a mall waiting for your wife to finish shopping or whatever. And I do it all the time. And I, I just love the way it makes me feel. It's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to prove that it's doing any good, but I just have to believe it is because it feels good. It feels yeah. good and, and nothing bad has ever happened. That, yeah. That's all I've got on that. I love it. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. And how it feels is how we know. We can always trust how we feel to tell us <laughs> where we're at and which voice we're listening to. <laughs> so does anyone else have any thoughts on any of this lesson? No? Shall we go to lesson 82? Oh, Stephanie. I just think we are so fortunate to recognize and to hear about our holiness because when i think about how most people have no idea and i'm not saying that other people don't study great things and know there's good in people and i'm not saying that but like i read this and like when coming on this zoom meeting it's like wow it's like so life affirming and joy affirming. I'm enjoying other things in my life now more, but they're not the thing that's the main thing in my life. They may go up and down. And I'm so grateful to um, well, I'm I'm grateful to be able to study, period. But this Zoom meeting has really been exciting for me. It's really, you know, it's really I'm grateful. Thank you. Me too. I'm grateful for the technology that allows it. Very. Thank you, Stephanie. Megan. Uh, I just got, got back from a trip visiting a friend over the weekend. And uh, this is very pertinent because I, I decided that I was going to embody the coursework. And it seemed everywhere I went, whenever I spoke, somebody said, I needed to hear that. I, I <laughs> it became, I just kept thinking miracles abound, miracles abound. And I didn't know if it was it was, you know, that I was noticing more, or I was just that that every time something happened, it was reinforcing everything I was doing. But I was very, um, I felt very bright, like a little bright light. And and even towards the end of the visit, which was, I was just exhausted. It was very hot. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I just felt so content with, oh, I was able to just keep going through. And I thought, wow, the coursework really is, is uh, I'm, I'm really retaining a lot of it. I, I didn't read any of it. A lot of people asked me um, specifically about things. And I, I decided that to try to relate the course in any other way than just to be thoughtful and listen and everything was beyond what I could do at the time. I was only trying to hold the light. So it was really wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Megan. Very true. Peter. Yeah, I love these reviews as well. And um, I'm just curious. So uh, I am the light of the world. How holy am I who have been given the function of lightening up the world? I'm just curious, how do people light up the world? How do you guys on a practical level? Like when I go to the grocery store, I always look for the name tag on the checkout person and I always thank them, you know, using their name, stuff like that. I smile, uh, you know, with, at strangers, which sometimes gets, gets me some odd looks in New York City. But beyond that, most people are receptive to that. And, um, but mostly what I do is I smile at myself. You know, I look, I, I do what they call mirror work. And in the past, you know, I would, I would look in the mirror and groan and I realize that's probably not serving me. And uh, it's hard to, if I can't love myself, 
you know, how am I going to be the light of the world, you know? So now when I do my meditation in the morning, well, so what I started doing maybe a year ago is I do what I call a smile meditation. So I have no other goal except to smile for 30 minutes, right? And just get in touch with the joy, you know? And he says in the teacher's manual, uh, I forget exactly where it is, but, but he says throughout the day, remember a thought of pure joy something like that. And so, you know, I put that into practice, you know, and so I smile for 30 minutes, I do some mirror work. And then if, if I'm actually out and about, I try to bring that with me. Sometimes I smile, you know, at, in traffic at other drivers, you know, <laughs> but that's my attempt to lighten up the world because we all take life so seriously. Right. So I think for me, at least the smile is, is the beginning of that. And I'm just curious how other people do it. Thank you. Well, I have something to say about that too, but I'm going to go on with Uma first. There, that's yep. better, right? Yeah. You can hear me. An amazing thing happened and I will blame it on this course. And it's so good to hear people say, this is my main interest, because it certainly is mine. Dude, dude. I sometimes go over to the beach here and sit in my car and listen to the waves. Sometimes at sunset, sometimes it gets darker. Sometimes a truck or somebody will pull up in front or behind me. And until yesterday, I didn't like that much. And a weird thing happened yesterday. Someone pulled up behind me. I'm sitting there relaxing and I say, welcome. My mind said, welcome. And I thought, how fascinating. And then I was parking somewhere else, looking directly at the waves. And I was praying when a noisy event came along, too loud, late at night. I welcomed that person into that moment. I'm so blown away. I love the course. Now, when I go to the store, I literally just visualize light, or I might say directly to someone in their mind, may you have peace, you are totally innocent. Now, those are the ways I try to uplift. Of course, I smile and talk people and have great interactions with strangers and all that too pet their dog and all that stuff but but um if i wasn't visualizing light and thinking you're an innocent child of god I, I wouldn't feel complete about that thank you very much oh that's great uma thank you for sharing that with us <laughs> i love that and i agree a smile it just it all starts with a smile thank you megan yeah, directly back to Peter, I think um, the whole time I, I I just, like the Course says, is to see the Christ in people. So when I, no matter how I, I uh, approached people, whatever was going on, uh, whatever they were saying, because a lot of people were saying, I'm having a relationship problem or this is going on, and it all seemed to be very earth-based. And I just um, uh, allowed it to, to go, uh, allowed it past me and I just kept seeing the Christ in them seeing that they were working for their good uh, whether they knew it or not and that they were loved and that whatever was going on was just a superficial thing and so I just kept you know uh, just really joyfully listening as if I was listening to them sing or something I, I just experienced it much more differently than I used to thank you that's good Megan I think that's such a good practice too. I'll, you know, good for you. Good for you. Johanna. Thank you all. A wonderful conversation, wonderful tips too. Um, the way I look at it, Peter, uh, to address your question is um, seeing the Christ in other people, thinking about smiling, um, and having a positive attitude. Those are all tools. There's all tools to, to remind me. That's the way how, how I go about it to remind me that I am a channel of the blessings, of, of God's blessings. And I can't do, I can't do a thing. 
So if I feel myself smiling at someone, it's not me doing it. And so that's a confirmation that I'm actually being a channel. And so that the instruction, see the Christ in everyone, is not something that the ego can do. So we have to make room for that, to allow that to happen. And when it happens, we yeah. witness it. And it's a confirmation of what we've, what we've actually done, namely do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Johanna. <clears throat> uh, Bill. Hi, bless. I'll speak to the question that Brother Alessandria proposed being how we see the light moving through us in our attempt to be the conduit of the light of God, like it's describing. And uh, I noticed that now it's a lot nicer to notice this now that none of the words that I can say can help them anyone get better in any way. It's not the words that I say. So it's the only thing what I believe that I'm doing and shining the light of creation is just in being in, in, in direct conversation with them and they get to see what the eyes of unconditional forgiveness looks like because that's my eyes. So I they get just by talking to me, they are they're just, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. It could be something serious or the weather. It's just the only thing that's happening is that they're seeing another human look on them with unconditional forgiveness. And they love that. I mean, we all love that. That's what, when we look at someone and they're like bright, these people like have the light and they, because they, they don't have an ability to hold disforgiveness. Some of those people get that gift. Amen. That we've got those people around looking on our people for true but this is where we all the studying teachers of, of god i believe end up getting to where we are the more clear conduit of creation's love for itself and that is the no words other thing anything else matters is just that they are feeling this from us they don't even know what they're feeling but i think that's that what that message is going on telepathically we don't even know what it is this is what the spirit is doing for us. So we're just trying to be in a situation where it's perfectly smooth and loving conversation without attack of any kind. And so we we gain this mind by studying what the course is telling us to do and to stop our attack. And then we as TOGs are the teachers of God get to a place where we no longer practice attack at all in our brain. And any time it starts, we stop it. And that's what we do as the togs. We're going around giving this light to our brothers and sisters. And that's all we're doing is like we're showing this unconditional forgiveness. And uh, and those ones that ask, we can easily show them how to get there. And that first thing is they just say, stop attacking your brain of anything, any grievance about anything. Don't allow your mind to think about it. That's all you got to do. Mm -hmm. Everything else will come for you. Yeah, I... Thank you, Bill. And boy, I agree with that. The thing is, is it, the the ego is just so devious and how it how it works around. So you just got to be on your guard all the time. Always forgiving it too, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Practice, not, <laughs> Giving all, all of it and laughing. At it. All it is, all yeah. opportunity forgiveness. That's all life is. If you want to break it down, that's how we can break it down. Everything is just an opportunity for forgiveness. So. Absolutely. Yeah, get the <laughs> Thank you. And Stephanie. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, did if you have trouble hearing me, just let me know and I won't speak today and I'll get it fixed. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm really grateful for what Bill said because I used to be a big advice giver and I really, and, and, not that I didn't know things, but I really have seen it's really not about the words. It's really about the energy. So what I work towards is being a, a sincere listener. And I love celebrating with other people with their joy. I used to be jealous if other people were happy and they had something I didn't have. And, and, and that's changed because I feel I'm in relation to everybody. I'm a child of God. <laughs> Amen. You know, like, ah, so, so 
Well, that's one of the things I do. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, wonderful. I, I yeah. It. yeah, and I feel your joy too. <laughs> and Uma, you still have your hand up. Did you want to say something else? Or did you, did you uh, just... First, no, first I'll say, I don't know how my hand got up. I don't know how to raise it. And that's why I usually just wave instead of trying to do this press the hand button. Yeah. Because last week I had it up. I was trying to erase it. It kept coming up. I'm going like this to say I don't. Oh, oh my God. But I do want to say something. It says straight up in okay. the course. Okay. If you make no decisions for yourself, we will tell you where to go, who to talk to, and what to say. Yeah. So sometimes the Holy Spirit has specific words for someone. Yeah. And thank and you. And just the other day someone saw me looking kind of down and came over to me and said it's in god's time not in your time and i needed to yeah yeah thank you uma megan i did want to say during my trip one thing did happen which was the the person who was visiting zachary he said that he had dated somebody who was very into the course and he never could get through it. And then he said, I even have a book and he brought it out and he started reading from it. And he tried to tell his friend what the book was about. And um, I said, okay, well now I have to say something because that's not what the book is about. Because he said, it, it helps you with your health. It'll, it'll tell you what's good for your health or not. And I'm thinking, okay, that's really not what the course is about. But um, I did feel called to tell him uh, I had the book since like 1983 to 1987, somewhere in there, and didn't start really reading it until 2016. Seriously, and I said, it didn't call to me. It didn't, It did. I couldn't read it. And I said, don't hit yourself over the head trying to read it or try to explain it to people if you haven't read it. I said, just let it go. You don't need to read the book to understand what I'm I'm telling you what I'm experiencing, what I'm experientially giving you from the book or what I'm saying is in the book. But I, I said, please don't try to force yourself to do it. So it's not a forcing kind of thing. Either you're called to do it or you're not called to do it, but you have the book, it's there when you need it. And I said, I'm, I'm positive that when you, you talk to course people now, I'm positive if you find a time when you are questioning these things and you find that what he, we have said spark something in you you have the book to read so he said, seemed pretty good with that and i thought uh, i was not actually saying that myself that was just pulled through me i thought okay am i okay with this that and i thought well i i didn't actually plan on saying it so i guess i'm okay with saying it because it came out of my mouth so thanks <laughs> um you megan maggie Yes, hello everyone. And thank you for the discussion. I, lo I love hearing all of the ways that you all are like understanding and working with this. And it's also relatable. Um, I was still thinking about Peter's question just about how do you light up the world? Um, going back to the review lesson that we're on right now, you know, I am the light of the world is the, the first lesson that's being reviewed in lesson 81. And I, and I think this goes along also actually with um, what Marguerite put into the chat. Um, but I'm just going to read that real quick, actually, too. She just said that just wanted to add that we're not asked to be without the ego or judgments, just to be watching them and not invest in them. But I was thinking about that question that Peter asked and about, you know, what what is it that I feel that I do, that I'm doing and doing the course and trying to bring light to the world? Um, you're trying to light up the world the way Peter said it. I think it's, it just, my mind went to about what, 12 lessons ago. Yeah. Lesson 69. We were talking about, um, not that long ago is lesson 69 is my grievances hide the light of the world in me. And I was just thinking about how that I think is my focus in practicing this course is like I do smile at others as well too, of course. I think that that is a kind and can't be um, harmful to be kind kind of thing. But I think my practice really is about noticing those grievances, letting them be uh, acknowledged, not denied, like letting myself notice that I have them, whatever they might be. 
And then being willing to give that up, being willing to be helped with it and have the mind changed. So just feeling like it's helpful, I think, for um, myself to remind myself of this. <laughs> so I'm saying it out loud to all of you to remind myself. It's like that to me is the only way here because we can't um, bring light into the illusion but you can bring the darkness to the light right you bring those grievances to the light and that's how we are the light of the world so that's all i wanted to share thank you thanks maggie i i i kind of forgot that part too it's like so thanks for reminding me okay <clears throat> does anyone have anything else to say about lesson 81 until before we go on to lesson 82 okay so who would like to read lesson 82 bill <laughs> how about you <laughs> okay go ahead and take your drink <laughs> thank you all right Lesson 82, here we are. I uh, just wanted to comment leaving lesson 81. Lesson 81 is one that I'm going to have to go back and do because it seemed like we did it too fast for me. So I'm going to be doing that and this. So we'll see how far we get in that. But lesson 81 seems like a really good one, especially with the review to make sure we get down pat and done. So I'm going to make... We don't have to go on to we don't have to go on to lesson 82. If you still have more you want to talk about lesson 81, let's do it. Um, well, no, it, I'm fine with it. I just just saying that I will have to review it like uh, and make sure that I do because it isn't one that I want to skip over. Um, and it's only today's I think wasn't it last week or did I miss a week in between that we went over it? I only missed one ever since the beginning, so I don't know. Yeah, but let I, us I, be. Let us be. We're at eighty two. So, okay. uh, fine with me. Okay. Let anyone else has comments to go back to eighty one. Okay. Do you want to read eighty two? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you read the first two? Read uh, one and two, and then um, Peter, would you read three and four? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Bill. Read one and two. Okay. Lesson 82. Here we are starting. We will review these ideas today. One, the light of the world brings peace to every mind through my forgiveness. My forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me. My forgiveness is the means by which I become aware of the light of the world in me. My forgiveness is the means by which the world is healed together with myself. Let me then forgive the world that it may be healed along with me. Two. Suggestions for specific forms for applying this idea are let peace extend from my mind to yours. I share the light of the world with you. Through my forgiveness, I can see this is true. Three, let me not forget my function. I would not forget my function because I would remember myself. I cannot fulfill my function if I forget it. And unless I fulfill my function, I will not experience the joy that God intends for me. Suitable specific forms of this idea include let me not use this to hide my function from me. I would use this as an opportunity to fulfill my function. This may threaten my ego, but cannot change my function in any way. 
Thank you both for reading that. Um, so let me see, Stephanie. So I had to raise my hand again. I hope I'm not speaking too much. Oh, no, not at all. Um, my forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me. I have to share this. So I was going with a man for six months and I was in love with him. I wanted to marry him and he broke up with me and it was very painful. So I had two months of real pain, but I did the work. I did the work. I got help. I got support from Johanna and others. And I spoke to him a few days ago. We had a one hour conversation. It was so beautiful. And what I wanted to let him know is that he did my life permanent good because he is a kind man. He had self-control and I stopped being afraid of men in an intimate relationship through him. And it was a really like, per like to me, it was a perfect re conversation. He was glad to hear that I wasn't suffering, you know, cause we hadn't spoken for, for, for five months. And so I just think, knowing that I could do that and that I'm strong. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to work. And so anyway, so I feel like now it's a holy relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's like going from a special relationship to a holy relationship. And that's probably one of the reasons I'm as joyful as I am right now. Yeah. Cause I feel my spirit is lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful, Stephanie. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> Megan. Uh, this may shift gears a little bit or maybe not, but on my trip, I was physically taxed to levels that um, I've, this is the first trip I've, I've done in seven years that hasn't involved family members who know me helping me at, at one end of the trip or another get through it. And so while the days were easier at night when I was falling asleep, I was exhausted and in, in a bit of um, discomfort. And I found uh, reminding myself that I, that no matter what I did during the day, I needed to forgive everything. So I began praying at night and offering up the willingness to let go of everything. And I this was just a wonderful experience to remember my function is to ask for help and to allow God in and to stop trying to do it myself. Um, stop thinking that I'm alone and I need to do it. I, I am not alone. I have abundant help if I ask for it and allow it in. And so I would pray over and over again. And I just, when I got home, I felt so blessed. I just felt so blessed. I thought, I have like what I, I kept telling people it's a maiden voyage. I I went, I was exhausted. I was I was uh, uncomfortable. I was the whole time. I just kept going back to praying and saying, "Let me not forget my function. Let me open myself up to God. This is all I need to." Um, and it really was uh, just no matter how exhausted I got when I caught home, I was quite refreshed, and I remember the entire trip as still exhausting, but just so affirming in so many ways. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Megan. Bill. Hey, uh, then in this lesson, I want to um, see if we uh, can clarify what our function is. I believe because I've been re reading this and going through and trying to I looked back up and seen if it mentioned what our function was, and it didn't say specifically what our function was. It gave the means, which is forgiveness. Okay, so the means is forgiveness, and our function is to heal the world. That's our function. I think, I think that's what the, our function is, to heal the world, and our means is forgiveness. And uh, I uh, just like to point out that earlier I was talking about everything is just an opportunity for forgiveness. Every single thing, it reinforced it here in four three. I would use this as an opportunity to fulfill my function. The function is healing of the world with the means of forgiveness. Yes, I think I have it right. If there are there any comments backing that up. 
Yeah, actually, I was thinking about that too when when the lesson was being read. It's like, uh, you know, okay, what did he say our function was? Right. I mean, I feel like I know what my function is, but right. it, it's like also the name of God. You know, it's like okay, okay, did did it say in there what the name of God was, and I missed that. Yeah. So there, I know there's things like that that come up in the course that uh, I don't know, but I think my function is to remember that you know, remember that I never left God and that there's really nothing else going on. I'm still and, there. And to help other people see through that knowledge that that's what they're also doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, except that's for, the not my, I don't feel like it's my job for them to see that. My, my job is just to love them and know that they're on their own perfect path, whatever yes. that is. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's our job. Next, yeah. Next. <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> yeah, I just put a I put a quotation in the chat um, for you, Bill, or for anyone else interested. It's from the text, chapter 26. Forgiveness is the only function here and serves to bring the joy this world denies to every aspect of God's son where sin was thought to rule. Um, I thought you said it well though, Bill. Like it is um forgiveness is like the means and it, it does it is the salvation of the world. So I, I felt you really said that well. And yeah. um, I'm sorry, what was that? They're interchangeable then. The forgiveness is the function and the means, either one, like it's, yeah, or forgiveness is the, the answer or healing the world. It's, they're all the same word. Like, yeah, God, Jesus. Yeah, so many. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I know we've talked about this before. I think it's always so helpful, though, to re be reminded of it. There are a lot of terms that I think are very interchangeable within within the course. But I, I always like to remember, too, that so forgiveness is our function um, in the dream. So it's like there's no that's not the real function. The real function is is creating. But in, in the dream, uh, forgiveness is our function so we can return to our reality and our real state. Actually, I had raised my hand originally, um, this is just brief, but I was just reading that the first paragraph here in lesson 82, underneath our review of lesson 63, and it just feels like this whole paragraph is answer to the question that Peter posed to us while we were reading lesson 81. He's like, how do you, if we're the light of the world, how do you bring this to the world? So this whole paragraph here, um, if you go up to Scroll paragraph up. yeah right underneath it says my forgiveness is the means by which the light of the world finds expression through me my forgiveness is the means by which i become aware of the light of the world in me my forgiveness is the means by which the world is healed together with myself let me then forgive the world that it may be healed along with me so peter when you ask that question i feel like here it is right forgiveness is how we do that and so for me, again, that is that does entail acknowledging the grievances and letting myself um, acknowledge that there is um, thoughts in the mind currently that are not my true thoughts and that they are the things to practice the forgiveness with. That's all. Oh, thank you, Maggie. That was great. <laughs> Peter. Yeah, thanks everybody. The the I was going to point out lesson sixty two. Uh, forgiveness is my function as the light of the world. But I want to draw people's attention to the uh, teacher's manual, or actually the clarification of terms, uh, section two, the ego, the miracle, paragraph nine. Uh, your questions have no answer, being made to still God's voice, which asks everyone only one question. Or one question only. Are you ready yet to help me save the world? Right? So how do we save the world? Well, it's through forgiveness. So what does that mean? Well, elsewhere he says, uh, or it's a, so so only we can save the world because only we've condemned the world, right? And the way we condemn the world is through our grievances, through you know, judgment. Uh, and all of that. And so by withdrawing my judgment, by not letting, and this goes back to what Maggie was saying, not letting my grievances dominate my mind, then I allow the light to come through. 
right? So I can't help but be the light. See, it's a very, the course is a very digital or binary teaching. You know, I'm either, I'm either the light of the world or I'm buried in my grievances and there is no light. There's really no middle ground. I can't forgive a little bit and then judge a little bit. I can't love a little bit and then hate a little bit. So it's being conscious in the moment. All right, am I, am I focused on my grievances? Am I judging? Or am I extending God's love through me by seeing the Christ in my brother, by forgiving, you know, not making that choice for love when I might normally choose fear? Mm -hmm. that makes sense yes yes it does that's great peter rich um all right lesson 81 all of it i'll just go for a comment here um i'm, I'm looking up things so um holy consecrated to god so certainly plenty of sentences in this book about living the will of god there's no question but one you should ask what is my father's will for me as my moments go by? So, um, yeah, definitely trying to live in that. And that's how I, um, uh, you know, that's how I am the light of the world. If I'm truly living up to that um, and love the, love the statements in the book about if I'm living in that state of mind, conflict free, holy, joyous, conflict free, deep sense of peace. You got a sentence in here, um, you know, to me, real enlightenment is, uh, you know, a real, uh, real tranquility, conflict-free, meaning undisturbed, undisturbed in any way, no mental upsets. Um, so then that I'll tie that into forgiveness. What's forgiveness really? Well, plenty of ways of talking about it, but I'm going to go with um, feeling discontented because someone else gets to do something that I didn't. Okay, so I'll I'll go with that as an idea about forgiveness i'm discontent because someone else gets to experience something that i don't get to experience so um you can't feel that way i mean it's like i am deprived of nothing has to be the real truth so then i have to live in the high the highest principles the highest understand the real truth of what's sinless pure and holy um just um yeah i mean it's, it's just important to um not have any discontented feelings because someone else gets to experience some wonderful thing that I don't get to experience. Um, that, that, that brings into ideas like, um, eternal patience, infinite patience. Um, it even brings in ideas like maybe not in this lifetime. Right. I mean, if, if, um, reincarnation, uh, you know, can be mentioned just that, yeah, maybe not in this lifetime, maybe some other lifetime, the ideas like that come into play in terms of eternal patience, uh, infinite patience. So, um, so being that type uh, thinking about that in terms of forgiveness um and um okay uh, that's i guess that's it oh thanks rich i'm glad you went back to that if you had stuff to say about that that's i love this thinking of being the light of the world and shining that light on other people um, do you mind, the two of you, uh, Andrew and Megan, if I go to Magritte, she hasn't uh, gotten a chance to speak today. So Magritte, share with us. No, oh, thank you. Surprise. Um, hold on. No, I forgot. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, shit. What, Rich said something and then I thought, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the thought that I had, it keeps saying my forgiveness and something that I just wanted to throw out there is like, who is the my he's talking about? Because it's a bit tricky. And I just wanted to hear your answers if anybody wants to answer that question. What's, 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 what uh, is the question you have about it? Well, it, it says in the lesson, uh, my forgiveness, my forgiveness, my forgiveness, my forgiveness, right? Right. So what is, uh, so it can be confusing because the ego will say my forgiveness. And I was wondering if somebody wants to share about 
what they think he's pointing at. Well, if there's only one of us, then my forgiveness is the me that I see as me that is for me as part of everyone else. So for, forgiveness for me is, is for myself. When I forgive me, I forgive the world. That's how I see it. Um, so l let me go to Andrew and then Megan because we're getting we're getting really close to the end of our time. Cause, and I think other people may have uh, answers <laughs> for you about that, uh, Magritte. Go ahead. Uh, did we lose Andrew? No, no, no. I'm here. Oh, okay. Um, what did you want to say? Okay. Well, uh, Marguerite's question is tough uh, because the, the ego is the part of the mind that has to learn. It is the only part of the mind that learns. The, the self part of the mind, the Holy Spirit part has knowledge and doesn't need to learn. So we have to learn what forgiveness is. But what I really wanted to comment on was uh, Lesson 82, the first two uh, practice lines uh, about extending peace to someone and you name them. Uh, it's really what I was referring to when I first spoke about Lesson 81. Uh, let peace extend from my mind to yours. I, I do this practice when I'm waiting sitting in it and there's a group of people like i said i was sitting in an airport terminal and i i just felt like extending the peace i had inner peace i wanted to extend it to everyone in the airport everyone in the terminal and i just felt love flowing through me like a waterfall and the more love i extended the more came into me it, it's just a very powerful practice, and I just wanted to pass that on to everyone. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful, Andrew. Megan. So I wanted to, I'll respond first to Marguerite. Um, I know that the Course is speaking to the humans that need to hear it. So my, to me, means that you who have not forgiven need to, <laughs> you who do not understand that forgiveness is is a necessity that forgiveness is your function because god does not need to know forgiveness god has already understood forgiveness and salvation people have already accepted it which um i don't consider the my to be an individual ego thing so for me that it's sort of a dualistic thing we need to hear it in some way and since we can't imbibe it we need to hear my because it speaks to us um, so then the second thing I wanted to say was something that Peter was talking about is like, he was talking about you, um, there's no halfway, there's either um, forgiveness or, or not forgiveness or salvation or suffocation, salvation. But what I wanted to point out was that a lot of people get it a little bit too far into believing that I'm either totally bad or I'm totally good, but I can't be at, at a period of grace momentarily here and there because I get it then I lose it, then I get it, then I lose it. And I wanted to say that um, this is the normal human experience that we, the, as we grow, we are in a period of grace more and more, and we feel it more and more. We slip a little more, less, and we, we're in it a little more. But to give, to it's really important for me, it's been really important for me to give those moments of grace great honor that I have been able to be in that forgiveness and hold that forgiveness for as long as I can be there because those support the many, many things that then, then grow up into larger moments of forgiveness that, that really feel like I've understood the course. So when people sort of show the, the you, you're, it's either this or that, I don't want people to get stuck into, if, it, if it's not this, then I'm, I'm totally that. Or if, it's, if, if I'm not totally at peace, then I'm totally at war. Or I'm totally an ego. It it really is a, a accumulation of understanding and 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 pulling it in. Thank you very much. Yes, good, Megan. Thank you so much for that. So I just quickly ask. I know we're at the end, but I'll say very very quickly. The question that I asked has everything to do with the answer that I wanted to give Peter also, because through forgiveness, the extension comes naturally. 
but only through forgiveness, because ego can also give a smile, but then it wants something back. So, yeah, but then when you see it's all the mind, then jealousy is funny because you're actually realizing that you're jealous of a thought. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. It, this has been great. I just feel like these sessions are getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and I really appreciate everybody's contribution. It's wonderful. So thank you, and we'll see you next Tuesday, and we will start where we left off. Um, we'll start, I'll, I'll check, well, someone, whoever's doing it next week can maybe uh, review uh, this review, Lesson 82, to make sure everybody got to say whatever they wanted to say and before we start on 83. Okay, so thank you all and have a good week.